when he started discussing this matter, regard being had to the fact that I had been one of the scribes who was allocated to write about this very issue of professional privilege, I snapped. And I told him, you cannot do this. You are not entitled to do this. You are not a member of the court. You have not said in this case. JP's response was that he does not mean to interfere with my work. It is just that there is no case against Mr. Zuma. He has been persecuted just like he had been persecuted. Could we witness the impeachment of a South African judge in our lifetime? Well, it seems like this could be the road Western Cape Judge President John Lope is headed for following the recent uh, judgment that has been delivered by the Judicial Conduct Committee. Is anything to go by? Good evening, I'm Alderan Simpier and this is Unfiltered. Opposition parties have welcomed the findings of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal investigating Western Cape Judge President John Lope, which has found him guilty of gross misconduct. In 2008, justices reported to the Judicial Service Commission that the Judge Klope had approached Justice Besson Gabinde and Justice Chris Jafta in an attempt to improperly influence them in a pending case against uh, Jacob Zuma and the company Tint. What does all this mean for the future of Judge Klope? Our guest this evening is Freedom Under Law Chair Judge Johan, Johan Krichler, who is joining us for this conversation. We also have uh, Paul Hoffman, who is a director at Accountability Now, and we're also joined uh, by Judge John Klope's attorney, Barnabas Tulu. He's also a director of the Cape Town based law firm BXI. And our question this evening is Should Judge Klope be impeached? Should Judge Klope be impeached? Remember that you can be part of this conversation by going to our social media pages using the hashtag. And as we started about two evenings uh, weeks ago, we remember that we are now also taking your calls to be part of our conversations here in studio. What you can do is dial the number 011-714-5958 or 5877. So 011-714-5958 or 5878. 7, 7 to be part of the conversation and the, the numbers right there at the bottom of your screen. Barnabas, let me start off with you. Good evening. Thank you so much for making time for us. What's your client's response to this finding by the Judicial Conduct uh, uh, Service? Tribunal, apologies. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Adrian. It is a very shocking uh, finding or decision. Uh, but uh, look, we're not surprised. And uh, our client was also not surprised. Um, it is available to him to challenge the decision uh, in terms of the law. The decision can be challenged uh, in a, by following a review procedure uh, on the basis of illegality. This is one decision where the tribunal has made it clear in its paragraph 74 that they did not have to follow any law in making this decision. So uh, we are very uh, hopeful. Obviously, we accept the decision, but we are very uh, hopeful that the court of law is not going to allow an illegal decision to stand. And as such, it will be set aside. So that is, that is basically the attitude after considering uh, the decision and uh, having consulted also at length uh, with the client. Okay, wait, that, so does this mean that um, Judge John Floppe will be taking this matter up and um, having a court set it aside? You will certainly, certainly be taking uh, this uh, decision on on the basis of, uh, as I said, uh, review it on the basis of illegality. I mean, this is a decision where the tribunal has made it clear that there was no need for a charge sheet after we have received two charge sheets. Uh, there was no need for it because uh, there will be no prejudice uh, on our client when this matter is considered. But we've made uh, thorough submissions dealing with what was wrong with the manner in which the procedure was followed. But at that stage, because the um, 
the tribe, members of the tribunal were not actually inquisitorial. They were just listening. So we didn't know exactly what procedure they are adopting, uh, only to see it now that they were not following the law because they, they, they felt that they didn't have to follow the law in considering uh, this um, matter, which, I mean, has dragged for so many years. Yeah. Do so it will be on those bases that, I mean, it will, it will definitely sure. be challenged. Do, do you know when exactly that um, challenge will be lodged? Well, well, we're currently working on that matter. I mean, we've received instructions today. As you, as you are aware, this was an unprecedented uh, release of the ruling over the weekend. Mm -hmm. People had other prior commitments, so we could actually be consulting late yesterday and today, I mean, the whole day, trying to understand and figure out what is this ruling about. Okay. Only to our but not surprise to see that there was no law that was being followed when the whole process was underway. And, and, and there's this clear uh, admission stated even in the ruling itself that they didn't have to follow the law. But, oh. but you have a Judicial Service Commission Act. You've got a code of conduct that is uh, responsible for guiding the, the behavior of judges as they execute their duties. So, that's why then the position is, this is shocking. And in fact, tomorrow we'll be issuing also a statement mm -hmm. in terms of what is our take on this, on this decision. Okay. Um, Justice Akrichle, just quickly from your end, um, does this move come as a surprise at all um, that um, Judge John Klopp is taking this on appeal? Or rather to have it reviewed and set aside? Yeah. How do you know the answer that, to that question? It, of course, it was predictable, as we know, the sun will rise tomorrow morning, that Judge Lope will kick for touch yet again. To del delay and delay has been his tactic for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and Paul, for you? Yes, now, I think it was predictable that there would be review proceedings, and it is indeed the right of Judge Schlope, if he is dissatisfied with the uh, finding of gross misconduct on his part to institute review proceedings. I'm very pleased to hear that his attorney is working on it already, and I hope that his legal team will uh, cooperate with case management in order to get the review into court as soon as possible, because it is intolerable that the head of a busy division of a, uh, a high court like the Western Cape High Court should be spending so much time on disciplinary matters in yep. which he is, in fact, the, the uh, person on the carpet. Okay. If, the, if the review is dealt with quickly, and it can be with cooperation in case management, then um, hopefully the extended delays of the past will not be repeated. Okay. Uh, uh, Justice Krichler, just quickly then, from Freedom Under Law's side, now that there is this new development, that this uh, report will be taken on, on review, does this mean that Freedom Under Law also now um, shifts its position from previously that the judge president must be suspended? Uh, on the contrary, Aldrin, it's because we anticipated this move that we urged and now repeat the request that the Judicial Service Commission exercise the power that the Constitution gives it to recommend to the president that he suspend Judge Schlobe. Then he can take his time and he can review the case. And if the case goes against him, he can appeal that and he can try to take it to the Constitutional Court. And he can take another 13 years, if he likes, as long as he isn't on the bench. OK. And Barnabas, just your quick response to that. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, I'm told this is a busy uh, division in the, in the country which has been effectively managed by uh, our client all, the, all these years of 13 years. He has effectively managed, uh, in fact, is one of the leading effectively managed uh, division in the country. Uh, both uh, uh, Justice Krupa and uh, Advocate Hoffman will confirm this. It's public knowledge. 
um, further that the issue of considering suspension based on the illegal or, 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 or the decision that we are saying, it is in fact uh, reviewable on the basis of illegality. Mm -hmm. I, I, thought, I thought maybe uh, the two gentlemen will address the paragraph 74 of this ruling, because I'm sure they must have read it. I mean, the, this ruling makes it clear that we are concerned here with the issues of judicial probity and ethical standard rather than rules of law. Uh, so on what basis this evidence was evaluated mm -hmm. if you are not using the rules of uh, uh, evidence uh, which, which is prescribed in our jurisprudence? Uh, on what procedure this whole uh, matter was uh, considered where you have more than one a charge sheet uh, presented before you, and you don't even understand what case to follow. So what exactly okay. are we dealing with today? So uh, at least if I can hear them. Okay. Do, uh, do you know what? Let's just, quickly, let's just quickly go to, to an ad break. And um, Advocate Hoffman, as well as Justice Krichler, I'll get you um, to respond to, um, to respond to Barnabas Kulu in aspect of paragraph 74. We've already made the point that the concept of a charge or a charge sheet is not a requirement in these proceedings. That conversation we're going to be having just after this ad break, but also remember that you can be part of the conversations using the hashtag unfiltered, and you can also dial our studio line, that's 011-714-5958, and you can also call 011-714-5877. No outsider, be it government, pressure group, individual, or even another judge, should interfere in fact or attempt to interfere with the way in which a judge conducts his or her case and makes his or her decisions. This core continues to be central to the principle of judicial independence. Interference, in my view, is where you are trying to persuade yes. on the facts. Mm -hmm. You are saying to the court, mm -hmm. find this way or the other way. I so, fail to see where there is interference when well, you talk about jurisprudence. Jafta is a seasoned lawyer. He was a seasoned judge even at that time. Mm -hmm. In the bigger scheme of things, however, he was going to be only one of 11 judges. Justice Jafta was relatively, uh, a relatively junior judge in that sense. He could there not therefore be in a position that was my point. Okay, so before I go back to my panelists, let me just quickly take this call from, is it Derek joining us from the Western Cape? Good evening. Yes, good, good evening. Uh, this is Derek, yes. Um, yeah, my, my question is just that um, if I've listened correctly to um, uh, Judge uh, President Slope's representative, um, I understand that he's saying that they are going to bring review um, proceedings basically based on the procedural aspect referring to the charge sheet. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to find out from him, what are their views based on the substance, the evidence um, that was presented with regard to that indeed Judge Slope did try to influence the, the, the two judges uh, of the Constitutional Court and that he was on a mission uh, going there, especially not knowing um, Judge Bessinger been there, mm -hmm. to try and influence her on that specific aspect, the okay. substance. Is okay. very few going to focus on that or just on the procedural aspects with regard to the charge? Okay, let's quickly ask him that. Uh, Barnabas, is it only yes. on the procedural aspect? What about the finding itself around that he tried to influence uh, the two justices? Not at all. We, we have to deal with the evidence, as I, as I correctly pointed it out when, when we started here. We have to deal with the evidence because there is no credibility finding against our client's testimony. 
Now, how then do you found that our client committed uh, this gross uh, misconduct when, in fact, uh, there is no credibility finding against our client? But further than that, it is a very astonishing uh, uh, finding here that is made around the issue of whether the conduct must be wrongful or, 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 or unlawful. Mm -hmm. This tribunal has made it clear that there is no need even for that, which is directly uh, contradicting um, Article 2 of the Judicial Code, in particular paragraph number 3, that talks about the willful or negligence breach of the, um, of the, of the, of the code as the basis upon which you can lodge your complaint. Yeah. Now, the material evidence here is very, very critical, and we'll deal with it. How exactly this evidence was evaluated when these were not the basis, there was no unlawfulness, there was no need even to establish the intention. And I think the clip that we have just played where my client responded, and it's also part of those, what, how have they dealt with that version? Mm -hmm. Because they are not criticizing it. Okay. There is no credibility finding against our client in respect of the entire version that he has put forward in the, in the proceedings. Okay, Advocate Hoffman, just quickly on that paragraph that we spoke about a bit earlier on, paragraph 74, um, which starts off, we've already made the point that the concept of a charge or a charge sheet is not a requirement in these proceedings. Yes, the, the, that is a correct statement of the law as far as I understand it. Um, uh, Mr. Zulu has not um, pointed to any provision in the uh, Judicial Service Act that requires a charge sheet. In fact, in this matter, there was a charge sheet which can hardly be prejudicial because it does identify the issues. And the issue is really a very simple issue. Section 165 of the Constitution was summarized by Advocate Marcus in the clip that you've just played for your viewers. And what that section says is that no person may interfere in the functioning of the judiciary. And this isn't a question of a, a credibility finding or even of a dispute of fact. What we have is everybody agreeing that Judge Schlorpe visited two of the junior judges at Constitutional Hill for the purpose of interfering with their functioning. That is inconsistent with the Constitution. You're not allowed to do it on any reading of uh, Section 165, and that is why he has been found guilty of gross misconduct on his own version. Okay, um, so we're going to go to a quick ad break. When we come back, there's a part that, um, Barnabas, that I'd like you to deal with, um, which is an issue around uh, the credibility that, that, um, that, that you speak of. And in this finding, it says, um, um, seen in this light, it is difficult to accept that Judge President, uh, Judge President Lopez's version that his visit to Justice Nkabinde on the 25th of April 2008 was merely to congratulate her on her appointment to the Constitutional Court. When one considers his conversations with Justice Jafta a month earlier, he appeared to have been on a mission. Indeed, this sentiment found expression in a simple yet potent proposition by, his evidence, by the evidence leader in the cross-examination of uh, Judge President uh, John Klopp. And I'll get you to respond to that just after this. We're going to go to a quick ad break. Remember that you can be part of the conversations as well by tweeting using um, the hashtag unfiltered and also calling the number right there at the bottom of your screen to be speaking to our guest here in studio. And welcome back, Barnabas. I just quickly need you to respond to um, that paragraph that I just read out now, which goes on to say, counsel for the Constitutional Court Justices attributed Judge President Slope's conduct in this, in this regard to premeditation, and it's difficult to disagree with this characterization. Exactly on, on, on that point, you have this decision saying there was no objection for the participation of 
the constitutional court justices other than Justice Kabile and Justice Jafta. We've made our objection because the participation of um, Advocate Gilbert Marcus was an anomaly in the circumstances where he could not provide evidence, in the circumstances where he has given evidence through the back door, because that evidence could not be tested of what exactly happened in the meeting in October where the former uh, DCJ and uh, Chief Justice have actually called meetings uh, to speak to these other justices about the matter, for that matter where the DCJ was not involved, but he was able to participate in deliberation and sway the decision of what ended up happening. But we didn't have an opportunity to even to deal with the evidence that he is relying upon, the evidence that he's even given a platform or a forum to start cross-examining our client when, when it comes to his evidence, it could not be tested. Yeah. So okay. those are the anomalies that, I mean, they're making this judgment not acceptable to our client. All right, we'll get uh, Justice Krichler to respond to that. We have to say goodbye quickly to our SABC3 viewers, but remember that the conversation continues on the SABC News channel, that is Channel 404. Okay, um, Justice Krichler, you wanted to respond uh, to Barnabas? <laughs> Alvin, I don't want to respond. I want you to point out to the viewers, if they don't already have noticed, that Mr. Kulu has not answered either of the two questions mm -hmm. that has been put to him. He's given us a torrent of words, a torrent of unsubstantiated factual allegations, but he hasn't responded to the simple questions that were, that were put to him. And I may also add that if, if that's the best case that his client can put up on review, uh, I, I feel sorry for, for them. Mm -hmm. It's it, the, the ruling, the opinion given by the tribunal is clear and simple. What the two witnesses, the two judges said is clear and damning. The evidence is perfectly clear. And what Judge Shlope did was grossly improper. The suggestion that a judge can come from Cape Town to Bromfontein in Johannesburg to go and lobby two judges about a judgment that they are busy writing is horrifying to anybody who knows anything about judicial ethics. It's not a question of rules or charge sheets. It's conduct that has been established clearly that is also equally clearly grossly improper. Mm. Unheard of in all this, of the years that I have been a judge. It cannot be uh, the, the, the kangaroo court. It has to follow the rules. If that's your suggestion, uh, with due respect, uh, Justice Krikler, I'm sorry, I will not agree with that. It need not to be a kangaroo court to conduct proceedings involving judicial officers, and there are no rules that are being followed. There is no unlawfulness that is being looked at. Which standard is being used when there is a code that prescribes the standard? It talks about the willfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the negligence breach. Yeah. And we are saying there was not even the need to establish the intention on the part of the person who's, who, who's being charged. I mean, what, this, oh, this can't be okay. a court. Okay, let's just quickly get Justice, Justice Krichler to respond to that, and then I'll go to uh, Advocate Hoffman. Uh, Justice Krichler? I am I'm, I'm not prepared to debate judicial ethics with Mr. Kulu, who manifestly has not got the foggiest notion of what it means. Thank you. That, that, that becomes a problem when a judge participates in these debates and then uses the authority of being a judge and exact pressure from me because I've never been a judge 
Mm -hmm. Now, I cannot comment on behalf of my clients because you've been a judge, you're using your previous experience as a, as, as a, as a judge over many years before even the democratization of this country. And now you are putting threats on me that I've got no idea. I've been representing Justice Slope for the past decade. Exactly. At no stage, at no stage, at no stage I do not understand exactly the provisions of the rules that are in existence. Now, for purposes of this decision, you are saying it is okay not to observe those rules. Why then those rules were, were, were put forward if, if they should not be considered at all in considering uh, the, 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 the matter before the tribunal? Okay, um, Advocate Paulman, just, just uh, Hoffman, sorry. Um, when it comes to the limitations in terms of conversations that the colleagues can have amongst themselves, including the judges, how far can they go and what are the limitations there? Well, what we got in the evidence in this tribunal was a Judge Slope insisting that he was entitled to go and interfere. And if, if um, I'm understanding Section 165 of the Constitution properly, it says no person may interfere in the functioning of the judiciary. So what happens in real life is that if a judge wishes to get the opinion of another judge on a matter in which he is sitting, that, that is in order. But for a judge to go from Cape Town to Johannesburg to go and impress his views about uh, legal professional privilege upon members of a court that is seized with a, 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 a matter of that kind is completely offside, okay. unheard of, and not allowed. It is an interference in the functioning of the judiciary. And the Constitution says no person can do so. And Mr. Zulu has not actually dealt with that basic premise that was put to his client by Advocate Marcus during the course of the case. And okay. it's, it's no good saying, well, you know, I do it all the time mm -hmm. if it's wrong. Okay, so, so when we come back, I'd like us to deal with um, the, the um, what is it, Article 11, subsection 3 of the Code of Judicial Conduct, which uh, Judge President Lope also raised during um, cross-examination in the argument around formal deliberations as well as private consultations and debates among judges are and must remain confidential. What does that mean? That conversation just after this, and remember, we're also taking your calls and your tweets. Okay, um, Justice Krichle, let's start off with you with that question that I asked a bit earlier on around um, um, Article th 11, subsection 3 of the Code of Judicial Conduct, which um, Judge President John Lope relied on, arguing formal deliberations as well as private consultations and debates among judges are and must remain confidential. What's your understanding of that article? My understanding of that article is exactly the understanding of the tribunal on that article. It's got absolutely nothing to do with what Judge Lope did in this instance, which was not to consult somebody else, to consult another judge, or to have a private co conversation. He went to lobby, to influence, to persuade. He went and said as much as that Mr. Zuma has had a raw deal in the SCA. He is being persecuted. Mm -hmm. What he is doing is he's trying to persuade a judge to change her mind. That's got nothing to do with Rule 11. Yeah. Uh, Barnabas, do you, do you agree with that? And also the question, like, how do you answer that part of the conversation that was had about the Supreme Court of Appeals judgment and how they got it wrong? Yeah, look, it, it was a matter that was being, and that evidence has not been challenged in this decision. It was a matter that was being debated by all lawyers and judges. The evidence has been put forward by our client. And yeah. they could not, uh, uh, in fact, it, it was an, even an admission by Justice Jafta that he has discussed mm. this matter with other lawyers. That, that evidence is, 
is right there. But, but Justice Jafta speaks no, about it. And, he, and he, he says, he, he, his argument is that those conversations happened after the Supreme Court of Appeals judgment, and that was before um, there were any deliberations in front of the Constitutional Court. So there was a pending judgment in front of the Constitutional Court when um, Judge John Kloppe then started making or having these conversations about the Supreme Court of Appeals, a judgment around privileges and how they got it wrong. Isn't in that the, a limitation? Yes. The, 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 the judgment was being discussed by other lawyers after the Supreme Court of Appeal yeah. has made a decision. He is one of the lawyers who was also discussing the matter. He was not aware. There is no evidence that he was aware that there were deliberations. There is no evidence that was presented to say before he even started these discussions with these judges, which, which are his colleagues for that matter, he was aware that now there were deliberations. And the evidence of Jafta, the first justice to talk to, is no way suggesting that he was now becoming aware that their deliberations are, are taking place. The, so I'm, I'm saying the rules of evidence should have been applied properly here. Mm. You have a case where the DCJ, the former DCJ, was not even a member of the panel. He is participating in meetings where this case is being discussed. Yeah. He was never charged. There was no referral but of that is, is that me Was I that meeting not about, uh, uh, not about the complaint itself? Not really about the judgment? The, 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 the meeting was about the judgment. That is why... Not about the, the complaint. No, no it's, it's, about, it's about the matter. If you read the judgment, you see the specific reference to this deliberation that were taking place with someone who is not even a panel member. Mm -hmm. But, but that's Who not the judgment. Were they discussing the judgment? He is not considered to have been interfering. So sure. were they discussing the judgment? Yes, they were discussing the judgment. It was discussing the matter itself. No, not the complaint. The I, I understand it we to be the complaint. The okay, uh, Advocate Hoffman, do you understand it to be, have been the complaint as well? I've been, I've been, we've made a request yeah. of minutes of these that meetings. That meeting. Okay. Advocate of Hoffman, meetings. just quickly... Meetings. Your We've understanding of that meeting as well. Advocate Hoffman, sorry? Yes, I, I agree that your interpretation of what was happening at the meeting attended by the DCJ is the correct interpretation. And anyway, if he was there at the invitation of the other judges because they wanted his input, th there's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong in this case is that there has been interference without an invitation from Judge Schlorpe with the deliberations, with the functioning of the court by his interventions, mm -hmm. common cause interventions with the two junior judges, acting Judge Justice Jafta and newly appointed Justice Inkabinda. That oh. is the problem and <laughs> nobody <laughs> so far has dealt with it. There's credible explanation, reasons why he was in that court which has never been challenged. But it's never been challenged. There were formal engagements with the Chief Justice, formal engagements with the Minister of Justice, which involves him to go and report to the Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. That has never been challenged as, as, okay. as evidence that is uh, not truthful as such. OK, let's now, just quickly take this call from Nati. Sorry, Barnabas. Nati, good evening. Okay, so Nati isn't there any, anymore. Okay, then. So remember that you can call us on 011-714-5958 or 011-714-5877. So one other aspect, uh, Barnabas, that you raise now is also the issue around um, the conversation that was had, um, and you speak of the Minister of Justice, and the argument almost comes across that um, Justice Besson Gabinda felt, or perhaps the interpretation thereof, is that there was a threat that some people would lose their jobs should ANC president become the president of the country. Was that a threat? Uh, the, the circumstances under which Minister of Justice was mentioned, it was, it was the same function where they were together with uh, uh, Justice Tabinde. Now, the two gentlemen are not saying what happened to the minutes of those meetings. And, and I see um, Advocate Hoffman is suggesting that uh, DCJ was 
invited by the other judges. How does he know this? Because we requested the minutes. Who invited uh, the former DCJ? Where is this evidence coming from? Because we wanted to see on the minutes the circumstances under which that meeting of someone who is not part of the, of the, of the panel is now uh, interrogating people who yeah. are part of the panel. And we could not be provided with the minutes. So, but so I, I, I need I need you to I need you to deal, um, Barnabas. I need you to deal with the aspect around the subtle thread that. Um, uh, oh, here it is. Um, paragraph 109. Um, Judge President Lope preludes his discussion with Justice and Gabinde by bragging about his political connections, followed by a subtle thread. People were going to lose their jobs once Mr. Zuma ascends to the presidency of the country. How, what's your understanding of what your client well, meant? My, my understanding of, 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 of that particular evidence, the mentioning of the minister was in relation to Minister Mabanda, that he, she was at the time working with, he was at the time working with, in a particular matter involving the appointment of women judges mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the judiciary. Client denied making any subtle threats like you are suggesting now in the hearing and even in the evidence that has led previously when client was uh, cleared mm -hmm. uh, before um, uh, Morane SC, Simenia SC and Justice Ngwepe. Same evidence. The only thing that has changed now is the tribunal. Okay. After, after the what I would consider now Justice Krikal to be the enemy of Justice Chope when he's carrying out his... After he has approached the court, that's the only time that this matter was sent back to the Judicial Service Commission. And it was very clear for cross-examination yeah. okay. so that this evidence is tested. But in respect of that cycle threat, can't deny that he's ever made those. those OK, those, those, let's those. just quickly take this call from Mike, joining us from Brits. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good, good, Mike. Uh, good, thanks. I want to ask this question. Uh, if Judge Trope is found guilty by the things that he did, uh, what would he, uh, his, uh, his, his, his lawyer do or what? Or, or, the president decided to impeach him by tomorrow. What, what, what is the next move from them? Okay, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a long process even before we get to that. Um, I don't know, Justice Krichler, if you want to answer that around the process that follows, and then we'll get Barnabas to respond to the last aspect of that question. As I understand, Mr. President, there will be no further process because they are going to interrupt the process with an application to review. And I would predict if, when they lose, they will try to take it on appeal and on appeal. If they don't do that, the Judicial Service Commission has to consider the determination made by the tribunal. If it agrees with it, it sends the matter to Parliament, to the Speaker, for Parliament to consider dismissing Judge Slope. Mm -hmm. If it disagrees, it must substitute its own decision uh, whether it's an acquittal or a lesser sentence, as they did in the case of Judge Motata. Okay, so in this particular case, if um, the matter is taken on review and uh, successfully taken on review, does that mean that's the end of the matter? Yes. If they succeed in having the proceedings set aside, uh, I would be astounded, but it would be the end of the matter. Okay. <laughs> Barnabas, um, just a quick response to that call from Mike right towards the end around what happens if there is an impeachment. Yeah. The, 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 confidence, the confidence of Justice Krepler is very interesting. He is having predetermined outcomes of what is going to happen. It seems to be very clear what is going to happen when we challenge this decision. The basic question that I have raised with this panel is... Why did we have to code these rules and the judicial code if it was not relevant for purposes of regulating the environment within the judiciary? Mm -hmm. Advocate Hoffman, Hoffman do you now think they that... Are no, they, are no longer, they are no longer required yeah. as the guiding 
framework to deal with the conduct of the, of, 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 of the justices. Okay, well, and, 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 sure. Sorry, Justice I, Krechler, we're struggling I, to hear you there. I know why those points are raised. The tribunal knew why those points were raised. Mr. Kulu knows why those points were raised, and his client knows. They were there to raise smoke and mirrors because the facts are perfectly simple so that you've got to raise all sorts of side issues and talk to this way and that way and all over the place mm -hmm. because facts are so simple. Okay, just finally, Advocate Hoffman, do you think that the, the Judicial uh, uh, Conduct Tribunal could have handled this matter in a better way, um, more efficient as well? And I know that there has been these challenges also um, from Judge John Lopez's side, but also at some point where you had Justice Jafta as well as Nkabinde saying that there is no formal complaint and they don't want to write a complaint uh, on oath. Yes. Now, I, I must agree with you that it, it is unfortunate that the matter has dragged since the, the middle, uh, since May 2008, when the, when the complaint was first made and when we were all still quite young men. <laughs> now we're old and tired, and we're particularly tired of the uh, amount of uh, judicial energy that has been expended on the matter. I think that the tribunal, once it got going, and was able to get the evidence and the argument has, 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 has produced a 46-page award which will be difficult to take on review. I believe that they have not only dealt with the, the law properly, but have set out the facts more than adequately, and that the review proceedings will, will uh, be doomed to failure. That those proceedings should be dealt with with the greatest amount of expedition. And while those proceedings are pending, Judge Schlorpe should be placed on suspension so that the poisonous atmosphere in the Western Cape High Court, which will be further poisoned by uh, the finding of the uh, tribunal, uh, is, is, is relieved. That division is not functioning uh, as it should with half of the judges in the pro schlorpy camp and half of the judges in the anti schlorpy camp. That is not the way to run a proper division of the High Court. Okay, just quickly, Justice Krichler, cl closing remarks from you. Thank you very much. I found this very interesting. I have not learned anything new about Judge Schlorpy's case or his attorney's attitude. <laughs> okay, Parnavas, your response. Just a quick closing remark. It's interesting. He, with, with due respect, uh, Justice Krippler is in a mission only to deal with one judge against whom there has been complaints. The number of judges with complaints. I've never heard of Justice Krippler in a campaign specifically to say those judges must be suspended. And now in a, in a matter which has not been properly handled with a view, we, because he's got a right our client to challenge any proceedings if he feels yeah. that the proceedings were not within the law to challenge them. I've never heard him calling for people to be uh, suspended because there are complaints against them. And he's very well aware of them. Now this suggestion that because it is Justice Klope against whom this tribunal has made this finding, he should be suspended. I mean, I, 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 I don't understand on what basis when he has been running the division efficiently without any gaps in the managing of, 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 the, of the division, on what basis now on a matter that is more than a decade ago, what is new? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for choosing Unfiltered. Um, Advocate Paul Hoffman, Justice Johan Krichler, as well as Barnabas Kulu, really appreciate your time. And thank you so much for choosing um, Unfiltered this evening. Let me just quickly read some of the tweets that you sent through before we say our goodbyes. Advocate Buitumelo saying that, yes, certainly, he must be impeached. As I see it, the ruling of the tribunal was properly considered and well-reasoned. He should know that cross-examination is the greatest machinery ever invented for the discovery of the truth. 
And uh, Mandiko, I think it is, says no, this is a purging process by utterly corrupt South African judiciary. Klope is one of a few honest, uncaptured judges still left in SA. The colonial um, OCJ, RSA, is corrupt to the core and must be disbanded. We must go back to the traditional African law. Elikhasa says, hello everyone, including viewers at home. Hello, Elikhasa. Let Judge Thorpe be impeached. He's not loyal. And Azanian people saying that he should not be impeached. Wide establishment are behind his removal as the president judge in Cape Town. Well, and that brings us to the end of today's show. Yet again, thank you so much for choosing Unfiltered. we we'll back again next week, same time, same place, right here on the SABC News Channel as well as SABC 3. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye.